the burden removing yoke destroying power of god is living in me the mystery of the gospel is christ in me christ in me mystery of the gospel is christ in me The Bible says in the book of 2nd Peter chapter 3 verse number 18 let's grow in the grace of God it says but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be the glory both now and forever amen the Bible says grow in the grace we have to grow where in our mind in our thinking we have to grow in the grace of God grow in the knowledge of God. So how do we grow in the knowledge of God? By knowing the Holy Bible. So in the Bible, I see three major covenants. There are other covenants, but three major covenants in the Bible. One, it is Abrahamic covenant. Two, it is Mosaic covenant. Three, it is Grace covenant, which is New covenant. When I see these three major covenants in the Bible, Abrahamic covenant, you become part of Abrahamic covenant by birth. If you are a Hebrew, if you are a child of Jew, then biologically you become part of Abrahamic covenant in old covenant. So that was the condition to be part of Abrahamic covenant, to be born in the family of Abraham. The second covenant, Mosaic covenant. You become part of Mosaic covenant by behavior, by performance, by your works. God gave 613 laws. You have to keep all the laws. By performing the laws, you fulfill the covenant of Mosaic, Mosaic covenant. The third covenant. Thank God, God found fault with the old covenant. The new covenant came in place. The grace covenant. You become part of the third B by believing. You become part of the new covenant by believing. So amazing. The new covenant, the grace covenant. So let me explain these three in the context of new covenant. The famous scripture that we say, Sunday after Sunday during our communion, Galatians 3.13. We say Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is curse of the law? The curse of the law is that you cannot keep the law. <laughs> the curse of the law is you cannot keep the law. No man can keep the law. God did not give you law to keep the law. Because God knows that you cannot keep the law. Law was given to bring epignosis. Law was given for you to bring the knowledge of sin. Law was given so that you realize the need of a savior. Amen. So when God gave the law, when God gave through Mosaic covenant, it was completely based on behavior which no man can keep, which no one could keep. So it was failed for every man. That is why it is called curse of the law. So you don't do this, all the curses which are mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 15 onwards comes on that person. Curse of the law. The Bible says, now verse 14, Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. Let me quote the scripture so you listen to me. You can display that. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. By being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He did this. Why he did this? Verse 14. He did this. In order so that the blessing of Abraham shall come on to the Gentiles. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Now understand, when you are part of grace covenant, what happened? You are part of Abrahamic covenant by being 
born again. Now there is second birth. In Abrahamic covenant, you are born again in the new covenant. How? The Bible says in the book of Romans, God has adopted us. Romans chapter 8. God has adopted us into the family and made us sons of God. The spirit of God has come to dwell in us. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. The same power that rose Jesus from dead. The spirit that resurrected Jesus. The spirit of the son has come. That means now we are sons of God. We are born again. By believing in grace covenant, you are becoming part of Abrahamic covenant. Galatians 3.29 says that if you be in Christ, then you are seed of Abraham. Just by believing and being in Christ, you become by spiritual seed of Abraham. You are fulfilling Abrahamic covenant. You are becoming part of Abraham's covenant. Second, Mosaic covenant. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Amazing scripture. It calls you righteousness of God. For he knew no sin. Amen. For he knew no sin to be sin. God made him to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. That we are the righteousness of God. So how can God call you righteousness today? What is righteous? A righteous man is a just man, as if he never sinned. Who's a righteous man? The Bible is calling you righteous man. What's the meaning of righteous man? As if you have never sinned. Look at the uh, honor that God has given you. God calls you righteous. You never kept the law. You have broken all of us, have broken all 613 laws. By believing in Jesus, we are fulfilling Mosaic Covenant. Amen. Today God calls us righteousness. Today God calls us as Jesus is, so are you. Today God calls you beloved. Today God sees you and says, I remember my son's tunic. You are my son because the spirit of the son is in you. Amen. So by believing in grace covenant, you are fulfilling Mosaic Covenant because Jesus came to fulfill the law. So by believing in Jesus, your behavior is 100%. Amen? No man could get 100 out of 100. Only Jesus God. Now that Jesus got 100 out of 100, he took your zero marks. He exchanged your zero marks and gave you 100 out of 100. On the cross, he became zero, right? He took all our sins. He was, he, the Bible says he was made sin. He did no sin, but he was made sin. He knew no sin. I like this uh, uh, phrase. He knew no sin. He doesn't know sin. He did no sin. In him, there is no sin. How beautiful the Bible says. Paul, intellectual man, right? So he said, he knew no sin. Peter, man of action. He said about Jesus, he did no sin. John, apostle of love. He said, in him there is no sin. Amazing God we serve. So that's about Jesus. So he had no sin, but he became sin. He took your zero. He took all your zero and made you hero. Amen. He took your sin and made you the righteousness of God. Amen. So today, in Jesus, you are fulfilling Mosaic Covenant. Wow, what an amazing truth. The truth of grace covenant. Truth of believing. What you do? How do you become part of grace covenant? Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. That's what we all did. How we became part. If there is someone who has not become part of this grace covenant, you don't have to struggle to be born in a Jewish family. You don't have to struggle to keep the Mosaic covenant, which is not possible. Just believe according to Romans 10, 9. This scripture is for you. See this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes. What is the focus today? Believes. Believes unto righteousness. And with mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the day you believe Jesus is Lord, what happened to you? With heart one believes unto righteousness. 
immediately the moment you believe you are born again you are part of abrahamic covenant now blessing of abraham has come upon you and the moment you believe you fulfilled all the mosaic covenant requirements and now you stand before god as the righteousness of god what a grace covenant it is amen what amazing grace it is amazing grace of our god what love of god we have what god has done for us this truth you must know why you must know this truth what is the reason to know this truth i told you how can you receive abundance of grace the first thing that we discussed the previous series that we receive by the knowledge of the son second thing i told you receive abundance of grace by realizing your weakness in your weakness his strength is made perfect what is your weakness what is the number one weakness that any man had Don't tell me your weakness is leg pain, hand pain, head pain. That is not the number one weakness that every man has. The number one weakness is that he is sin. He is not a sinner. He is sin. What do I mean? He didn't become sinner because he did sin. He is sin. So he committed sins. So the number one weakness of man, the shortcoming, he could never ever make it up to God was because of sin. of sin that was the number one weakness that he could ever uh, he, he with that weakness he could never make it up to god and god turned that weakness in my weakness he is my strength that is where he gave us this grace covenant amen by believing that weakness is taken away by believing the sin is completely done away now my dear friend all the young people who are struggling with addiction who are struggling with rejection who are struggling with condemnation i have good news for you there is no sin issue with god amen yes this is the truth there is no sin issue with god god is no longer keeping record of your sins no matter what you have done yesterday what you have done all these years the moment god sees you the moment you approach god all the time god is watching you through the blood as the righteousness of god this is the right standing that you have before god you must know this truth don't be sin conscious be sun conscious amen it's so powerful it's very important that you be sun conscious and not sin conscious why because if you are in sin that means you are in mosaic covenant mosaic covenant was completely sin conscious do this wrong do that wrong rules and rules and rules all the rules that you cannot keep you cannot do this you cannot collect the sticks on sabbath day they say you are wrong you cannot do this on sabbath day you are wrong there are so many laws and no one can keep so people are so afraid what am i doing what am i wearing what am i talking is god angry with me oh just by touching the uh, mercy seat the ark of the covenant uza died oh my god 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 is angry that's what the image that people have got in the old covenant sin consciousness continuously sin conscious because sin was not dealt with now in the grace covenant sin is dealt with so do not have sin consciousness it is very important that you don't have sin consciousness very very important why because if you are going to live in grace covenant you have to completely come out of sin consciousness because the other day i visited one family who are attending our uh, church we visited and prayed for them and it was so sad to see that man has a grandmother who's 101 i was so happy for her life that god has given her long life she's living long and healthy but she's unable to uh, walk because of her age she is uh, sitting on the wheelchair so this lady she is a born christian and 101 year old you know what is she praying every day god forgive me god don't reject me god don't condemn me she is singing she is a north indian she is singing hindi worship song which is the song goes like this god do not pass me by god don't reject me that is her regular prayer with earnest longing and she's so afraid to face death she's like i don't know if god is going to reject me i don't know i will go to heaven she's so much hurt and in fear looking at her i was uh, so hurt to see that what teaching she has received for 100 years she has lived by not knowing how much god loves 
For 100 years she has lived thinking that God is waiting to punish her, God is waiting to reject her, God is waiting to condemn her. Don't live your life like that. Don't live with thought that God is hating you, God is punishing you, God is waiting to judge you. It is a wrong gospel. It is wrong news that you heard. She's unable to hear me. I shared the message of eternal redemption with them. I told them about the love of God while I was talking, uh, probably because of her age or because of what uh, she's gone through. She almost fell asleep. The other family members were listening and I found out that she is not able to hear me completely. So I went to her ears, very close to her ears while praying, uh, while laying my hands and praying for her. I thought like, how can I sum up the whole Bible to her? All hundred years of teaching, how can I make her to unlearn? What message can I give her this evening? I thought, I went into her ears and I said, I want you to know one truth. Just one truth, you know, nothing else you need to know. And I went to her ears and I said, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you very much. Please understand, believe. This is the gospel. This is the good news. So let the good news enter your bones. Let the good news enter your spirit. May the spirit revive and may you have the revelation. That's what I prayed for her. 100 years listening to the wrong things and living in condemnation. How many of us are like that? Sin conscious. How many of us are afraid? God, should I do something? Weak and beggarly elements. I really like that uh, scripture. Weak and uh, beggarly elements. What is that? Uh, weak and beggarly elements. It says, when we are trying to justify and come before God with our performance, when we are trying to prove to God with our righteousness, God is calling it as weak and beggarly elements elements. So let us not have weak and beggarly elements. So like the people who are always sin conscious. Why my dear friend? In, in the Old Testament, I see in Mosaic covenant when they were sin conscious continuously, what happened? The entire generation did not enter the promised land. They did not enter the promised land. They could not enter the promised land because they were so much in sin consciousness. Don't be sin conscious. Now that I'm telling you, don't be sin conscious. I am not encouraging you to sin. I am encouraging you to be sun conscious. Look at the scripture, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2. So beautiful it says in Hebrews 10, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of the Father. That is about Jesus. Now see the previous verse, verse number 2, 10, 2. It says that Jesus has cleansed, cleared, and has solved our consciousness. Hebrews 10, 2. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more Consciousness of sins. Very, very important. Have no more consciousness of sins. Let me explain. If you're conscious of sin, if you're conscious of your addiction, conscious of your guilt, conscious of your regret, conscious of your shortcomings, then you're not conscious of the sun. The more you focus on your sin, your sin will grow. Whatever you focus, it will grow. If you have condemnation in your heart, that will grow. Don't focus on that. Be guilt-free. Yes, sin has nothing to do between you and God. God loves you. When you understand his love, his love empowers you to overcome addiction. His love empowers you to overcome sin. His love empowers you to live life of victory. Amen. So the Bible says no more consciousness of sins. Why? In Mosaic covenant, they were always conscious of sin. Because they were conscious of sin, they did not enter the promised land. So today, if you are conscious of sin, you are, you are going to be in the same place. Because in Hebrews chapter 4, it says, lest you fear that you will not enter the promised land. That you enter, it says, labor to enter into rest. Enter the rest of God. Enter the promises of God. Enter the promised land. What is the promised land? What is there? By not being sin conscious, how I can go there, pastor? Let me explain it to you. What you focus will grow, I told you. It's a biblical scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. My favorite scripture. Where it says, By beholding Jesus, 
Now our faces have been unveiled. Unveiled, that means the veil is removed. Look at that scripture. But we all with unveiled faces, looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, image from glory to glory. Let me explain. If you are constantly looking at sin, what are you being transformed to? Sin to sin. If you are constantly looking at condemnation, what are you being transformed to? Condemnation. If you are constantly looking at sickness, what are you being transformed to? Sickness. If you are constantly looking at poverty, you are driving your energy, your focus, your attention to poverty. What are you being transformed to? Power. Poverty. The Bible says with our unveiled faces. Why? In the old covenant, Moses was wearing a veil, right? That veil is like law. He could not see the grace covenant. The, because the glory was fading on Moses, it says in the, in the same portion when you see 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 3. Glory was fading, so he was wearing. Today for all of you in grace covenant, for us, the veil is removed. Now that veil is removed, what are we doing? We are able to see clearly the mirror. What is the mirror that it is talking about? When you see the context of James chapter 1 verse 23, the Bible says the word of God is mirror. A man who reads the word, does not do it, is like the man who looks at himself in the mirror and forgets how he looks like. James 1, 23, 24, I'm quoting. He forgets how his face looks like and he goes on not remembering what is he like. James 1, 25, you can show them. The next verse. Now it says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. Now what is this mirror? The mirror is the Bible. Now show them 2 Corinthians 3.18. The 2 Corinthians 3.18 says the mirror. I showed you James to prove to the point the mirror is talking about Bible. And this Bible has got another name in James 1.25. It is perfect law of liberty. It is not law of condemnation. It is law of freedom. Amen. So now when you are looking at the mirror, when you are looking at the mirror, and which mirror you have to see? Not Mosaic Covenant. If you are looking at Mosaic Covenant, you will continue to remain in sin consciousness. You will be in condemnation consciousness. You will be in judgment consciousness. You will be in the, uh, in the feeling of rejected. So don't look at Mosaic Covenant. Look at the perfect law of liberty, the mirror. Look at the mirror that is Grace Covenant, the new covenant. And it's so beautiful, that scripture. It says, the one who looks at the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. I like that uh, phrase. It says, and continues in it. You must Continue. Don't visit New Covenant and come back. Don't visit New Covenant Church and get back to Old Covenant. Continue in it. Say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> continue in it. So when you continue, when you're continuing to going on looking at the mirror, you know, as you gaze on the mirror, as you see the grace covenant, as you see the law of liberty, as you see the mirror, which is New Covenant, you know what's happening? The mirror is revealing how beautiful you are. Amen. Amen? Yes. The mirror is revealing how beautiful you are. It is revealing me. I am the righteousness of God. It is revealing me as Christ is who I am. It is revealing me. I am accepted in the beloved. Beloved. It is revealing me. I am just like Jesus. Oh my God. I am as beautiful as Jesus. Wow. So the law of liberty. The more you are looking into the law of liberty. You know what's happening? You are being transformed. If you think I'm struggling in sin, pastor, what I should do? The more I preach on the law, you will continue to struggle in sin. This is the truth. The more I preach on God's grace, the more you look at God's grace. Show them verse 18. You're transformed from glory to glory. You are being changed inside out. Amen. So you're looking. So continue to look at the grace covenant. Amen. Continue to be grace conscious, forgiveness conscious, Jesus conscious, son conscious. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. As you are conscious of Jesus, as you're conscious of his love, there is change from inside to outside. Now, you, without your knowledge, you hate 
your addiction you have overcome your addiction and you don't know when you have overcome it's completely gone and you are no longer in sin sickness conscious you're completely looking you're looking at whom grace covenant when you're looking at grace covenant whom are you looking actually you're looking at jesus the more and more you look at jesus like the moon looking at the sun the more and more i look at the sun the moon is getting all the energy from the sun so i look at jesus and i am being transformed from glory to glory amen that is why it's very important to listen to grace messages very important to be sun consciousness amen glory to god when i say grace covenant when i talk about grace many people have intellectual definition of grace they say yes pastor i know grace is unmerited undeserved unearned favor of god very good intellectual definition what is faith yes pastor i know faith faith is substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 excellent intellectual definition from intellectual definition it has to become a revelation amen as you are looking as you are beholding the beauty of jesus when you get the revelation of what grace really is when you know what grace is what grace is grace is provision of god to man amen grace is every provision that man ever needed by god for man it is god's provision to every need of man what was your every need your need was forgiveness of sins and there is god's provision your need was healing there is god's provision your need was prosperity there is god's provision your need was deliverance there is god's provision your need was love and there is god's provision in grace grace is god's provision to man's every need and what is faith more than a definition remember faith is your positive response to what god has done how how do you do the positive response to what he has given i say god thank you for giving me forgiveness of sins thank you for making me rich thank you for healing me i respond to the healing that he provided i thank you jesus for loving me i am loved i am the disciple whom jesus loves when you receive this that is faith faith works by love amen so because you understand his love it is easy for you to respond to that love so when you respond to that love and say thank you for forgiving my sins and making jesus your lord that's all over you are saved simple <laughs> by believing you are saved forever as simple as that to receive your healing and prosperity thank you jesus for healing me thank you jesus for loving me simple over you are you are healed you are prospered it's done deal god has done it now you are receiving it amen that is the combination which talks about in uh, ephesians chapter 2 verse number 8 we are saved by grace through faith amen grace is god's part to do god's part which he has done faith is my part which i have to do amen so be grace conscious by placing your faith in what he has done by being sun conscious by focusing in the law of liberty by focusing on new covenant by understanding what god has provided then you will no longer be in condemnation conscious you will no longer be in sin conscious when you are no longer in that you are free from that amen condemnation is root of so many sin and sickness don't live in condemnation it is trick of the enemy to condemn you to tell you have done something wrong someone has missed something it is trick of the enemy condemnation is from devil do not allow that root to grow because it will produce a bad fruit remove that root of condemnation today receive the law of liberty receive the fruit of love we believe you were blessed by this message Our vision is to make known the mystery of the gospel which is Christ in you. You can be a blessing by partnering with Priya Abraham Ministries to share this good news. To partner, visit priyaabraham.org/partner.